Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, we're changing things up a little bit. We're going to talk about review and approval, but not the review and approval you might be accustomed to. What we're going to talk about is live review and approval with Looper. Now, I know you're probably thinking that Looper is going to be another standard review and approval application that you upload your edits to and then clients feedback on and then you have to take those notes and download them and decipher them. Well, you couldn't be more wrong. Looper is about to take your Media Composer client monitor virtual. Now you can have clients log into your own personal Looper meeting room and you can stream your Media Composer timeline or really the client monitor live directly into Looper for immediate client feedback, just like they're sitting in the edit suite with you. All right, now I'm gonna keep things short in this intro. Let's just head on over to Looper and let's get things rolling. All right, so I guess the first question is, what is Looper exactly? And as you can see, I'm on Looper's website at looper.io. And basically what Looper is, is it's live collaboration for video pros. Well, what does that mean? Because you sort of hear this term thrown around a lot. I know that people are using applications like Zoom and like Google Meets to attempt to do what Looper is doing, but it's not quite the same thing. And this is how I like to describe it to Media Composer editors. What Looper is, is it's my virtual client monitor. What it lets me do is to gather a group of people in one room and have Looper utilize the NDI output of Avid Media Composer to play back to what is essentially my virtual client monitor so everybody can collaborate in real time give comments and i can make changes to the footage that i'm working on on the fly and play it back for them in real time so that i can get approvals right away okay so i guess the next question is what exactly is required to run looper well first is a copy of avid media composer the second is going to be a copy of lbs and we'll talk about that in just a second and third is a looper account and the best part is you can sign up for a completely free looper account at looper.io now let's circle back just a second let's talk about this lbs what is this lbs application that i'm talking about well, most people are familiar with OBS, meaning the Open Broadcaster software, which is basically how you can stream from your computer to the internet absolutely free. Well, what LBS is, is basically a customized version of OBS's streaming software. And what it's gonna let me do is take Media Composer's NDI output, encode it, and stream it directly into my Looper room. Now with that said, let's talk a little bit about something that's important when you install Avid Media Composer that you're going to need to make sure is checked so that we can get Looper to work properly. What I'm going to do is just minimize Chrome here and you'll see that I have Media Composer launched. What I'm going to do is just go into our first project. This is the project that we've been working on basically almost since we've started this tutorial series. And what I'm going to do is just minimize Avid Media Composer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call up this little screen grab that I took when I installed 2024.2 and you'll notice right here is the option to install the new tech NDI plugin. This is very important. It might not be checked by default. I normally always have this checked when I'm installing each additional version of Media Composer that I put on my system. Now, once I have it installed, there's a little bit of setup inside a Media Composer that we're going to need to do. So let me show that to you right now. All right, so let's head into Media Composer. And I wanna go into a little area of Media Composer that most people don't even know is there unless you're working with hardware. Now, I'm gonna come right over here to my hardware software output. Now, again, like I said, most people are only accustomed to going here if they have external hardware attached to their system, which I don't. But what's important to keep in mind about that NDI plugin is what that NDI plugin is doing is basically becoming my virtual hardware. So all I need to do in here is to come in, come to New Tech NDI, go into configure and make sure that I know what my Avid's PC name is, which in this case is KPM underscore PC, very you know self-explanatory. And all I'm gonna do is simply say, okay. Now let's get LBS open here, and I'm gonna show you how this gets set up very quickly and very easily. All I'm gonna do, simply come down here, type in LBS. Now, to be honest, the window might look a little bit daunting, but there's really only a couple of areas you need to focus on to actually get the stream to come out. And the first one is right here. What's our source? Well. 
I already have the source input here, but if you didn't, all you'd have to do is hit plus, and you'll notice that if I double click on it, the source's name comes up immediately because it's the only NDI output source I have. If I had more, I could drop that down and see them all. I'm gonna leave everything else on its defaults for right now, and I'm simply gonna say okay. Now you'll notice the window is black. Nothing's actually happening yet. And the reason being is because I haven't started sending my signal from Media Composer to LBS yet. So all I'm gonna do now is simply come down, I'm gonna come over here to my hardware software output, and I'm simply gonna activate it. Now you'll notice as soon as I do, I now have the conduit from Media Composer to LBS going because, and I should shrink this window down just a little bit here. Sadly, I don't have a ton of screen real estate here, but you get how this works. I'm gonna come back here and I'm simply gonna hit play. And you can see that we're basically getting a live output out of Media Composer directly to LBS. Now I've got this on low bit rate, so basically super low video quality, but the beauty part is, is that depending on your connection, you can really set this to be whatever you want. For the purposes of this demo, I'm just gonna keep it set as low. I may need to make adjustments when I get into Looper, but just keep in mind is that this is where you're going to do that change to quality right here. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm simply going to stop Media Composer from playing because believe it or not, that's really all the setup that you have to do. You'll see everything's ready to go. I've got my signal coming out of Media Composer to LBS. Now all we gotta do is to take that virtual patch cable and patch from LBS into Looper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna log into Looper right now and I'm gonna show you how simple this is to do. All right, so as you can see, we are in Looper. I've already created a room for us to work in. To create a room is quite simple. There's a little button that says create room. It'll ask you for a clever name for that room. You can then create the room. And at any time, if you need to change any of the room settings, you can simply do that in the room settings. You'll see here, there's a whole bunch of different settings that you can get in and change. What I'm gonna do is just cancel out of that because I just wanna point out that there's actually two pieces of information left for us to get from LBS into Looper, that one little last patch cable. And what we're going to need if I come into my stream keys is the server URL and the stream key, which is just blurred out for privacy purposes right here. And all you're going to do is simply in LBS, come in here, take that information and punch it into the server and into the stream key, and you'll be all set to go. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come back here. I'm just gonna hit play on Media Composer and just sort of let it play in the background. And what I'm gonna do inside of Looper is if I wanted to share this meeting room with a whole bunch of different people, what I can do is simply come to share. For me, I don't normally create, you know, passphrases and all that type of stuff because normally the people I deal with are fairly, I don't wanna call them fairly private, you know, clients, but they know not to share these links with anybody else. And what I would do is simply take this link and send it to them. Once they have it, I can simply enter my room. I will be asked which microphone that I wanna use. I love the clever little, you know, gathering the crew together, little uh, notes popping up. And what I'm gonna do, simply select my microphone here and I'm gonna say go, push to talk is turned on, which is totally fine. And everything should be good to go, but I don't see anything. Well, that's because there's one last button that's exceptionally important for me to press inside of LBS. And of course, that is to start streaming because Looper's not gonna see any information unless I stream it to it. So what I'm gonna do is just move the LBS window out of the way and simply hit start streaming. And in a matter of a couple seconds, you're gonna see that stream now appear inside a looper. And what I'm gonna do is just minimize this window so it's right out of the way. And you can see, now keep in mind, you'll notice that there's that little section where it sort of slows down. That's not anything to do with the streaming or anything to do with looper. That's actually a slow-mo that I had in my timeline. But I wanna show the fact that this is playing back in real time. Now, you'll remember earlier that I said that I was gonna keep it on the lowest video bit rate because I wasn't really sure what the quality would be in Looper. Well, you'll notice it gets a little bit chunky, a little bit blocky, especially in the dark areas. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch the video bit rate from low to high, right about there. And as soon as I do, the video cleans up a ton. The quality is really, really good now. And again, this is playing back in real time. It hasn't dropped a frame yet. How do I know that? 
because LBS will actually tell me that right here. No frames drop so far. Very good. Okay. Now, the beauty part about this is, is that really I can now go on with my screening. I can, you know, play, I can stop, I can, you know, bring the footage back, I can hit play again. I can really do anything that I would do if the clients were sitting beside me in the edit room. The only difference here is that they could be sitting across the street, they could be sitting across the country, they could be sitting across the world. And now speaking of clients, where would they actually pop up? Well, keep in mind, this is live review and approval. So obviously, Looper has complete built-in video chat for all of the clients that you send invitations to that will join your room. You'll see them appear on the left-hand side under where it says my name right there, and they'll have complete back and forth dialogue with you, much like they were sitting with you in the edit room directly beside you, just like with any other application that you might use, like Zoom, like Google Meets to communicate. The only difference here is that we've got the live video feed from Media Composer to go along with that video chat. Now you're always gonna have the clients where they're gonna say, wait a second, stop that footage for one second. Cause something's going on in the background here that I don't like. You know what I really don't like in this shot? What I really don't like is all this garbage back here. Is there anything that we can do, like some sort of visual effect work to get rid of this garbage here? Cause I don't like it. So you'll see that the clients, anybody that's actually in the meeting room, can annotate directly on the screen. Maybe they're gonna say, you know what? I know she's running this direction, but really what we'd like to do is to flop this shot and we really like to have her running the other direction. So you can see that they can get in and write slow-mo. What's wrong with that? You know, that's just looking weird. And I can say, oh, don't worry about the slow-mo. You know, that's just something that I put in there. It's not an actual stutter in the video that's playing through Looper. And at any time, if we're done with the annotations on the screen, all I have to do is simply come in and clear them all and I can come back and hit play and get everything back to normal in our review and approval process. All right, now what I think I wanna do now is I wanna show you a couple features of the studio version to show you where you can take your live Media Composer Client Monitor to inside of Looper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm simply going to exit out of my room because there's always times where you will get files at the last minute that maybe you didn't have a chance to put in your edit or there's additional files that you need to share with the team and you wanna get feedback on it. What I'm gonna do is just leave the room. I'm gonna to return to the home screen. I actually have a couple tabs open here. And what I'm gonna do is head on up to the File Spaces section. And you'll notice that I have a section in here called Demo. And you'll notice that I've got four files here and the room assignment right now is set to nothing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this down and I'm gonna assign them all to my own screening room here. I'll drop that down. Let's just assign them here. Very nice. And last but certainly not least in here, last one, I'm gonna say save. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to head back to my rooms. I'm going to enter my room. I'll just close the other tab that it opened here. Let's come back here. I'm going to say go. I'm going to say okay. Now keep in mind, my stream's still going to be there. I'm going to come back. I'm just going to hit play on my stream. Everything's going. Client says, okay, we're done for today. I say, well, hang on a second. I Maybe I have some lower thirds or there are some additional graphics that I wanted to show you. I didn't have time to throw them into the edit. So what I'm going to do is just show them to you now. And maybe you might want to download them or do whatever you want to do with them from here. So all I'm going to do is simply navigate over here to my live stream drop down, which is currently selected as what's being played back in Looper. And I'm simply gonna change that to an actual file playback that you'll find, I don't wanna say on, on lesser review and approval sort of online portals, but this is a very common way that a lot of these online portals will set up their review and approval as playback and not as real time. What I love about Looper is the fact that you can have your live collaboration with your virtual client monitor, or if you need to, you can also throw files in here just to playback very quickly, very easily, you can jump through. Of course, at any time they can say, you know, we really like more sparks here. You know, I like more sparks. Let's have more, you know, put some in some sort of an effect that has more sparks. They can do everything they can do with the still video as well as the moving video or the live video inside of the Looper interface. And of course they can download these files as well if they wanted to have them on their local system. All right, now there is one last thing that I do want to show you before I wrap this up. And this is a fantastic feature inside of the studio version of Looper. I'm just going to switch back to our live stream here. And what I'm going to do is hit play because these days, privacy 
and making sure that your product does not get out sooner than it should or if it does being able to identify how it was leaked out is exceptionally important and looper studio version gives you the capability to add client side watermarking to your footage so this way it will highly discourage anybody from doing a little bit of a screen record here so that they can take our fantastic Hollywood uh, you know, quality edit that I did here um, and post it onto the internet for anybody to watch. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna stop playback for one second and what I'm gonna do is just exit my room here. Okay, and I'm gonna go back to my settings. Inside my settings here, I'm gonna come to my room settings and I'm gonna come to my watermark section and you'll see that I now have the option to add a client side watermark. As I said, this is fantastic inside the studio version of Looper. And once I check that little switch, I'm gonna come down and save changes. Let's just jump back into my room. And what I'm gonna do, just for the sake of privacy on my own end, is I'm gonna blur out my IP address. But you'll see how this works. You'll see that in the upper left-hand corner of the video now is not only my name and my email address, but also my IP address that this stream is coming from. Now keep in mind, it's showing me my own. If I had other clients that were logged in here watching this on their own home system, they'll see their own name, their own email address, and their own IP address because obviously it's showing what's on the client side. So if they were to record this screen and attempt to post it anywhere, that watermark would be on the screen. All right, now those were just a couple extra features inside of the studio version of Looper. And for me, what really stood out about Looper in general was really its ease of setup and its ease of use. I was probably up and running in maybe 10 minutes or so. And really to go from the client monitor all the way across the internet and have it actually played back in real time through Looper was actually very impressive. I also love the fact that it has an adjustable quality setting for your video and even your audio, but basically the video so that depending on your internet connection, you can adjust the quality to keep that real-time playback as much as possible. And you saw when I was playing things back, I really had no dropped frames at all. Now, there is a free version of Looper, but what I want to do, because you watch this tutorial, is I want to give you a free 30-day trial of Looper Plus. So what's that going to give you? Well, it's going to give you up to 4K playback from your Media Composer timeline to your virtual client monitor inside of Looper. It's also going to give you a built-in video chat as well as on-screen annotations and a passphrase protected room. Again, you can use the link in the show notes below. And I hope you found this tutorial useful, especially when it comes to, you know, making a choice when it comes to review and approval, because you want to give your client the absolute best possible experience. You want to have the best possible video quality. And I think Looper is definitely an option that you should check out. Now, as always, I want to thank you and I want to remind you that if you found this tutorial useful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it across your social media channels. And if you have any questions, whether it's about Looper or any of the other tutorials on the channel, please don't hesitate to send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. Thanks a lot for watching.